Okay. So um, we're going to discuss today um, the, uh, the sampling distribution of the mean and its implication. So basically, uh, the idea is that you have a population and a variable that we're going to call x. And that variable has a normal distribution with a mu and a sigma. So basically, uh, if I want to represent it, it looks something like this. OK. And what we said is, um, suppose you're going to take um, samples from this population of a certain size. So you maybe you're taking five at a time, or maybe seven at a time, uh, depending upon your choice. But anyway, we're going to call the sample size n. So if you take samples of size n, and every time you're going to calculate the estimate of a mu, which by now you know is x bar, and this x bar is trying to estimate the mu. So this is your first estimate from that sample. And then you repeat the process, you take another sample. Again, you're keeping your sample size the same, n, you're not changing n. So if you're taking 10 at a time, then you're going to keep taking 10 at a time. And every time what you're doing is you're calculating the estimate of a mu, which is x bar. So that's a different x bar. So to differentiate between this one and that one, I'm just going to put one here, going to put two here. And we keep doing that uh, again and again. So we keep calculating estimates after estimates till you actually took all possible samples of size n from the from this population right there and you ended up with all possible estimates of mu coming from samples of size n and therefore at this time you can think about these x bars these estimates as a population of estimates because there's no other estimates from sample size n of that population and then it happens that if you look at this population, well, this population is now made of elements x bar. So it's a population of x bars. And these x bars actually have a normal distribution. And they are centered. They have their own mu, which we called mu x bar, to differentiate it from this mu right here. Uh, from this mu and they have their own sigma so we're going to call it sigma x bar and again to differentiate it from this sigma right here and what happens is that this uh, average of the averages so the average of the averages turns out to be exactly equal to mu and if you think about it every one of these uh, estimates right here every one of them is trying to estimate the mu and so by the time you took all the possible estimates, and by the time you average these estimates, they're going to do an excellent job at estimating mu, where uh, their average is going to be exactly equal to mu. So that's number one. What about the standard deviation of these x bars? Well, the standard deviation of x bars is going to actually be smaller than the original uh, sigma right here. And that makes sense because you're actually looking at estimates and estimates tend to aggregate closer to the point of estimation, which is mu. The relationship is actually described as uh, sigma of x bar is equal to the original sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, and remember this n is not changing every time you take a sample size, you're taking the exact same n. So what that means, uh, it means that these x bars have a normal distribution, okay? They have an average mu x bar, which is exactly equal to mu, and they have a sigma f of x bar, which is equal to the original sigma divided by square root of n. And that is what we call the standard error of the means, Okay, standard errors of the mean. So the standard deviation of the population of x bar, we refer to it as standard error. And um, this, uh, this, and, and this distribution is what we call the sampling distribution of the means. 
and why we call it sampling distribution of the mean because obviously what you're doing is you're you're taking estimates from samples therefore the sampling and distribution because you're actually drawing the distribution and the means is because every time you're actually calculating x bars if you were calculating median we would call it the sampling distribution of the median if you were cal if you were calculating every time modes you will call it the sampling distribution of the modes and uh, the sampling distribution of the mean is actually normal as long as you started with an x that has a normal distribution as I mentioned at the beginning of the video now if you were to change n and if you were to make n bigger now okay so now you're picking a different n which is bigger what's going to happen is you're going to get new sets of x bars okay different than the first ones and you're going to end up with a different population of x bars but again if you were to draw that the distribution of these new uh, population of x bars that population is going to also look normal it's going to also be centered around mu excuse my drawing okay so it's going to be normal it's also going to be centered on mu so mu of the x bar in purple is again going to be equal to mu so i can write it right here it's again same values but what's going to be different is that the sigma x bar of this population uh, is going to be actually uh, smaller than the red one the reason of that is because of the factor where you're dividing by the root square of n so as sample size increases, the, stand, the square root of n increases, and therefore the whole thing decreases, therefore the standard error decreases, and the sampling distribution of the mean remains normal. It remains centered at mu, but it becomes narrower as I draw it right here. Okay.